page select screen because this is basically the same equivalent of uh, pressing start when creating a new save file in the first place. So let's go. So yeah, as you can see, skipping cutscenes. Very convenient right now. Uh, that saves literally like three minutes right there. <laughs> then having to sit through all those cutscenes and uh, additional tutorials as well. And we're already kind of given our first main mechanic of the game, the, the drill. And the interesting thing about this game as compared to many other Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games at the time, where the shoulder buttons were kind of just used like shortcut keys for like Golden Sun or various other games, or they were just completely ignored. The shoulder buttons here are actively used. You hit right trigger to spin the drill right, and you hit left trigger to spin the drill left. Very simple. But it's going to get a little bit more complicated as we go along uh, through the game. So, uh, for other things that New Game Plus affects in this game, uh, you might notice uh, my, at the top of the screen there is my health bar, and I have like five little green like battery icons below it. Those are represent additional health bars. I have. All those health unlocked uh, from just the health upgrades I bought and that carry over in New Game Plus. Um, that's pretty. Uh, uh, that's nice, but it's not like, oh my god, he's got almost this health. His risk of dying is never gonna be a problem. Too easy run. And to a certain degree, that is true. But for the most part, Health was never that big of an issue in any percent in the first place. You only bought one health grade, and that was just so you could uh, do a bunch of damage boosts in a certain chapter. So it's not like health is a, such a huge determining factor of how fast you go on this run. That's not to say that it isn't completely, because we're going to be doing a lot of damage boosting right, throughout this entire run. Oh, come on. I'm actually trying to do a little skip here by doing that. And I really want to do this one skip right here. There am I. Okay, I got it. That just skipped me having to use a nice... Um, winch, I want to say? That I would normally have to use in order to get across that room. But by bouncing off that enemy's head at the top of their jump, and then shifting gear to level 2, I actually get just enough height so where I can get up onto that platform. It's a lot trickier than it looks just because uh, Jill has a lot of momentum and weight to her jumps. And that could be... Oh, that sucks. I missed that jump. Unfortunate. Uh, all that weight and momentum can throw you off quite a bit if you're not careful. It's, it's like she's trying to jump in a giant metal drill machine, you know? I can't imagine that would be easy for anybody. So, we just got third gear. And with um, third gear, we can now shift our gear up to third gear. Whenever you shift up, the drill spins faster and is more powerful as a result, allowing us to drill through blocks faster, destroy enemies faster, and more importantly, um, Destroy these self-repairing doors. If you do not have your uh, drill upgraded before you reach these doors, you cannot destroy them. And they're effectively uh, blocked. And every time you unlock third gear in a level, you get this uh, change in music as well. Get used to this music. You're going to hear it a lot. Luckily, it's a pretty good theme. The other thing you might be noticing that I'm doing a hell of a lot with Jill is this little uh, dash maneuver. You're not supposed to be able to do it like that. Oh, this is a tank. We're gonna stick our drill into its nose thing here. And kill it. It's actually faster for us to destroy the missile and take the damage than it is to try to dodge it. 
so we're going to be doing a lot of that in the run where we want to purposely take damage just to speed up a boss fight. Okay, get through here. So the dashing works very similar to um, what you would think it would be. You hold down, you hit the jump button, and you dash forward for a little way. But if you do a, like a little quarter circle forward motion whenever you do a dash, Jill's head pops out and this resets her animation. And then you can kind of go immediately back down into a crouch, resetting uh, the animation again, allowing you to dash immediately. And you can keep doing this over and over again, letting you move faster over ground than you would normally. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for everything because Jill's head has to be sticking out. And later on, there's going to be like tight patches ways where we won't be able to stick our head out. So that was the first level. Pretty basic tutorial level to help you get used to everything. Uh, the, pro uh, the progression in this game is very old school 2D platformer style where, you know, you start a stage, you, fight, you get to the end of the stage, you fight a boss, you finish the stage. Every stage, though, usually has some unique gimmick to it that teaches you a new mechanic about the drill, and this level is no exception. Here is a jelly block. This jelly block can be drilled into indefinitely. It will never be destroyed, but if you hold uh, the drill button, like with the R spinning the drill right, and then immediately hit the, uh, the L button to cause your drill to immediately stop and reverse. All that momentum gets transferred away from this thing, and suddenly you can get launched off of it. Allowing us to kind of like, weirdly repel. We're gonna be doing that in some pretty effective ways to just get around. But first we got a little mini boss here. I have been trying for the life of me figure out a way to deal with this boss in two cycles, but I've only been able to get three. I feel like it's possible to get two, but it's really tight timing. And here I'm kind of already like trying to push all these animals to get uh, these enemies together. They're not animals, what am I saying? Um just so I can kill them all in one big drill spin, because again, it takes a little bit of time for your drill to, you know, rev up and get the full power. But I can kind of just lightly tap them into each other, then kill them all at once. And here we're introduced to the other more uh, important thing that it comes to New Game Plus. Those blocks I just destroyed right there can only be destroyed with an upgraded drill. And the upgraded drill has two levels to it. They cost a lot of money to upgrade. And the worst part is, you can't unlock the, uh, the, drill, uh, the drill upgrade that actually matters for, the, uh, for any major skip in this game until you've beaten it. So, yeah, that's why New Game Plus kind of exists. But, unfortunately, upgrading your drill doesn't, like, increase its damage output. All it does is let you drill through those very specific blocks. So, in reality, New Game Plus and Any% percent is really not that much different from each other. The only major factors you get from New Game Plus is that you have more health, which isn't that big of a deal, you can drill through a certain block, which makes you take little small skips here and there, but nothing like, oh my god. It really is just the cutscene skipping that saves so much time in this run, comparatively. Oh, you can also kick back off of enemies, not just jelly blocks. So this is very important to do right here, too, because I want to kill these tanks at the same time, or close to the same time as possible. Ah, oh, no, I screwed it up. And this is why you want to kill them at the same time, because they get angry when you kill their brother. How dare you kill my brother? 
and he fires out three missiles. Ah! I feel pretty bad for screwing that up, honestly. <laughs> I shouldn't have. But whatever. Alright, let's see if I can get this. Okay, good. I've missed that chandelier there so many times. So, we're kind of waiting for this thing here. And we have to use level 3 gear here in order to get across. Because the more power that you put into your drill before you use the kickback, the more rebound you get. Okay, I didn't miss the cycle. I don't care how much damage I take from these enemies, I'm all about just making them cycle. So, keep on climbing up. This is probably one case where I'll say where New Game Plus has the advantage with some extra health. Because you're damage boosting through all these enemies constantly and 80% as well, and health isn't is a little bit of concern. Luckily, because it is the second level in the game, and you know, game developers being like, "Oh, you're still learning. Here, have health. Lots and lots of health drops that are sprin sprinkled throughout the stage. So it's a time loss to pick up the health, but it is there. So it's not like it's the most horrible thing ever to do for 80%." Anyways, I just skipped a, a cutscene there that introduces kind of like the main antagonist, Krug. Uh, just to give a plot summary here, Krug came, beat up your uh, your dad, stole your red gem, and now you got to take it back. Alright, here we kind of get it introduced our first major boss fight. This is Krug and his drill. My drill's better than his drill. Unfortunately, his drill takes forever to warm up, and I have to wait for him to attack for me to attack, because it's, you know, I could attack him in his face or something, but no, I have to destroy his drill to prove my drill superiority. And there, he spits up. After a little bit here, start spitting out these bombs here. I want to destroy those bombs as soon as I can. Because, you know, the game expects you to, like, jump over the bombs so you don't take damage or whatever. But as soon as those bombs go away, I can counterattack his drill and destroy it. There we go. That's, that's phase one. Luckily, phase two is um, pretty much the same, only more bombs that we have to destroy. And there's my red Chaos Emerald that I would really like to have returned to me. Okay, we're gonna blow up all these bombs. You know, it's fine that we take all this damage. We're used to it. Okay, I was a little concerned there. Uh, this game has, generates a lot of lag in some of these screen shaky moments. So, it's really easy for me to accidentally try to shift gears too soon, and I end up losing my drill speed, and I have to fight, um, do another round with this guy. So, that was the second level of the game. All right, we're at 14.30 at the end of that. Uh, it could be a little better, but I did screw up that one part, so that makes sense. So now we're going to go to the art museum, because we heard a rumor that uh, our gym has been taken to this art museum. So we're going to naturally break into the museum, get into the vault, 
and take our gem back. Don't worry about being lied by the citizens. Turns out we're actually thieves that use his drills. We're very well known for our drill thievery. So we're just going through here, normal. Because again, our drill is back to level one. Every time, every time you finish a level in this game, your drill gets reset to the default gear. Because you know we spin our drill so freaking hard that. Our gears get worn down, so we have to replace them after a while. And here we're introduced to the other gimmick here, is these, uh, kind of vents. And depending on what color the vents are, is the direction the drill needs to be spun. If it's red, you need to spin the drill right with the right trigger, and vice versa, L, when it's blue. So here we go. I have tried my hardest to see if it's possible to skip getting a gear in this game, but they have like so many different ways of just blocking you off from being able to progress without getting a gear. It's literally impossible. And even then, being stuck through an entire level in gear one is one of the most miserable feelings in the world. You don't do jack squat for damage. Alright, here we go. Top notch security systems, courtesy of your taxpayer money. Or at least I assume it's taxpayer money. So, um, up here, because this one we can use level 2, but we can't use level 3 yet, so we have to go up this way. Something else is a little weird about damage boosting in this game. Um, whenever I take damage, if at all possible, I want to take damage close to a very high C. If you take damage, you lose control of your character for a while. But if your character in the dam uh, damage animation hits the rooftop, well, you will immediately regain control of that character. It's really, really weird, and it's just kind of a nice convenience if you can make it happen. We're at gear level 3 now. Unfortunately, um, they made it to where it's impossible to go kind of like... ...return back where we came. So we have to use this alternate path to get back where we were, that we want to continue on. In the very first level, there is a thing, you know, when we first acquire gear 3, where it's like, Hey, look, there's a block you can drill through now that you have gear 3. Why don't you go try it? And I'm like... No, I could just, you know, backpedal the way I came and get there faster. But there really isn't anything else like that in this run anymore, unfortunately. And this is uh, one of the very many kind of like enemy rush encounters. All these guys, mooks, whatever, they all die in one hit. They're just a different coat of paint at every level. But the random in which direction they come from, and I have to kill all of them. Right. Now I have to kill the shield guard. It would technically be faster for me to kill that guard if I was like drill bounce on top of the guy's head. But because j bouncing off an enemy's head is so unwieldy in this game, I don't find it worth it. I think the game's trying to teach us something here, guys. And I think the lesson was... Drill the big 
screw. Hmm. Good to know. Now, look, there's a puzzle. We should solve it some other time, because we can drill through these instead, saving us time. Can you guess where this is supposed to go? I'll bet you'll never guess. Does it go here? Here? Oh, wait, right there. Who, who would have thought? All right. Ah, it's okay, guys. It's it's fine. I never knew how to solve that puzzle when I first saw it either. All right, We've got a few more enemy counters here to deal with. Uh, for the most part, they're fine, but when they bring in the shields, they're kind of annoying. But here's the big uh, fear, Doggo. Take it. Take it, doggo! Okay, good, he gave me a good pattern. That dog can go wherever the hell he pleases, I swear. Hmm, this robot looks very familiar. Now, this boss may initially seem random to a lot of people, but if you have your drill spinning while standing in front of it, it will always do the exact same thing every single time. And luckily for uh, us, spinning the drill reflects the punch shot, uh, punches from this boss as well. So we can kind of use it, our drill as a jump button. What? Hello? Okay, that's better. Um, you know, talking and playing video games, harder than it looks. Just... There we go. And boom. And that pretty much wraps up this level. Unfortunately, that is not the last toaster dog we will be encountering in this game. And... We're going into the first level in the game where I honestly think they're... I don't really hate this level coming up, but I don't necessarily love it either. And I think part of the reason why I don't love it is because there really isn't a lot of interesting movement options. It's really just kind of like go with the flow. Like, everything I've been doing here, for the most part, the timing of my drill spins, uh, the timing of my dashes, my precise jumps, the damage boosting, that's all been part of what I like about this game as a speedrun. But when you get to all these sections where you have to slowly drill through these tubes, I can't defend it. As much as I like this game, I just can't defend this. Thankfully, they don't hold back the these sections for long and give you um, gear level 2, which makes it a little faster. And say hello to evil Pac-Man! Nom 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 nom. Evil Pac-Man has a problem with walls, unfortunately, and instantly dies encountering them. He hasn't been the same since. Alright, here, second. Uh, nope, I want to drill those because it's faster than the can go under. here. And Evil Pac-Man returns! No! Uh, 
Unfortunately, uh, the spots where Evil Pac-Man shows up is kind of like a cutscene, so the game will stop you and it's just like, Hey, look up! This is important. You need to see this. I don't mind the steam here. It's just steam. Hot boiling steam that, you know, burns and melts your skin off. I don't mind. So, I'm gonna, okay, I'll hopefully this guy stays right there. Good, good, good. Awesome RNG. If this enemy right here had decided to uh, not hug to the wall to the left, and instead kind of go more towards the right. I would have to kill them. Otherwise, he would have interrupted me. Because uh, if you're attacked while spinning your drill, it will cancel it. And it's very annoying. So here's what we need to do. We need to use a very complicated um, lock. Like, super complicated. Nobody will ever figure out this code. What do you mean it was just written down right next to the freaking drill? Who would think to do that? That's almost as bad as having your locker code, uh, uh, your locker code being one, two, three, four. Not that my locker code is that number. Sorry if I'm being a little bit more wacky tonight than I typically am. I'm just, I'm actually really tired. It was like 108 degrees today where I work. Which, for those who are not of the United States, it's roughly, I want to say 41 Celsius. So it was bloody freaking hot, okay? Ugh. Oh, speaking of hot, we got some hot bombs here. EMP bombs. Don't worry, we can cool them off. With this fountain. Jill, I feel like we are missing the obvious solution of running away from this room. But that's just me. So, yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. Unfortunately, I've tried everything I can in this game to be able to skip this minigame. Because, obviously, skipping this would save a lot of time. The only thing I can do here is kind of try to be optimal with destroying the bombs here. Because it actually doesn't matter if I blow, uh, how many... I put out, it's how many are on screen and go away. So the moment a certain amount passes and blows up or whatever, then the minigame ends. So we need to use this water one more time here because the wall pressure is so incredibly powerful, we can stand on it like a platform. Physics. I'm pretty sure that's how physics work. And there's the case of me resetting my controls after taking damage and hitting something above me. Alright, I'm glad I wrote down these codes, honestly. I probably wouldn't have remembered them. Two, three, four, five. And one, two, three. All right, we have one more left to go. And I believe we're about to get our third gear again, which means we get more music.
you might also notice these levels are getting pretty long. And that's because there's not many levels in this game. Altogether, there's, um, oops, talking without thinking. Um, I need to use this one more time. Levels are fairly big in this game for the most part because there's so very few of them. There's like nine levels altogether or something. Okay, I might play this a little risky, let's see. Uh, okay, I'm good. If I get hit by that laser while carrying a painting, I will drop the painting, the painting will break, and I have to reset the room. Which is obviously a pretty big time loss. Here. And we have 10 whole seconds of nothing to do! What do we do, guys? I don't know. Uh, I hate waiting. Oh, thank God, it's over. Go here, poke you, poke that. That's what I mean about how just kind of like drill pogo drilling is really awkward and I don't like doing it. We have another painting. Yeah, when you put the painting here, it's much nicer, I agree. And we have our last block here. And this one is, let's see, L6. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then right once. And left 12 times. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I do want to actually count it out like that because if I do go over the uh, where it's supposed to be, it's not like it stops immediately. I have to let go as soon as I can or else uh, I have to do that whole thing over. So now that we've got the the vault open, we need to get back to the vault. Fortunately, we have to kind of go in a very uh, around about way of getting there, which is through all these areas. Luckily, this part I actually don't mind that much because even though these are more you know, like stop and go sections with the the vents, for the most part, when you get the gear three going through these things. Uh, it feels very Sonic the Hedgehog, like with just you're just going through loops and screws and all that fun stuff. No, I. Okay, there's an example of me getting greedy. Trying to shift gears too soon. And when that happens, it I just fall off and I look like a dunce. See, this is the part I like. You're just kind of just going hand rolling through all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, I like the sense of speed and... Curse you, evil Pac-Man! Yeah, 
even sound like Pac-Man. Alright, now we have our first mini boss with RNG. And when I say RNG, I mean this guy has a 1 in 3 chance to attack with the correct arm. That is the not correct arm. That is the correct arm. Continue to use the correct arm. Now, it doesn't actually matter how much damage I do here. No matter what, I have killed this boss in 3 hits. And he's kind of being that guy. So if he continues to be that guy, okay, we're good. And we're through. So now that we're done with crab meat, we can continue on to the vault. And we're here. Now, once we get into a vault, we're going to immediately get into the chapter boss fight. Now, if you thought Crab RNG was fantastic, say hello to Police Bot RNG. This boss will either th will throw her cuffs here. And that was good. That was good. That's exactly what we want. And we want her to not throw her cuffs in a boomerang-like fashion where it returns to her. Because that means I don't get as nearly as much drill time. And this happens. Thanks! Thanks. I appreciate getting handcuffed to a giant handcuff, which makes absolutely no freaking sense. No! You did it again! Why? Two ice in a row! <laughs> uh, uh, could you not do that, please? I I'm asking nicely. Okay. Yeah, we're mighty switch for us, but the rules have been reversed. Okay, at least I was able to dodge the boomerang, but that's really unfortunate. We got three boomerangs in this fight. That is really bad luck. Four boomerangs. Listen, who told you this was a marathon run? Excuse me, miss. Ow. Alright, we're done with phase one. Luckily, phase two is pretty RNG free. The only RNG we have to worry about is these enemies she likes to spawn out of the gold bars piling up over there. And we have one more to do here. Hopefully we can um Okay we're good. I didn't care about killing those extra enemies, I only cared about them not getting in the way. So, yeah, we're done with that, and get used to this explosion cutscene! It's not overused at all! Wait a minute, that's not red! And that's not an emerald! But we'll take it anyway. So with this, we have acquired our first fruit gusher. Go ahead and skip all this cutscene. No, I don't want to save. It doesn't really matter. Now we're going on to Area 3. This is the Kura Ruins. And the Kura Ruins is... Ahem. <clears throat> the spooky level. Because, you know, we need those in every game. How spooky is our spooky Kura uh, Ruins level is? Well... 
Let's see. How about some skeletons? Can we get some skeletons, please? There we go, some skeletons. Now, I really don't want to attack the skeletons anymore, because for whatever reason, they decided that skeletons have to release poison when you kill them. Because, yeah, that's nice. So we're not going to kill the skeletons. Unless we have to. Alright, don't screw this up. Okay, we're good. That's just a little skip I did there. Gurren Lagan? Oh yeah, I forgot that was a show that had drills in it. This kinda is like that. This mech has a face on it too, with drills. Yeah. So let's see here. Oh yes, we got a we got platforms in our ancient uh ancient ruins with that was somehow a more technologically advanced civilization, but was in the past. But mysteriously died off. Again, spooky. Alright, we're in here. Alright. Fortunately, we can't take that shortcut up there yet. We can't take this one. And we're, you know, skeletons were clearly not spooky enough. Luckily, there's Capus. And by lucky, I mean, why? Why Capus? Why? I hate these boos. They are RNG hell. Alright. I hope you enjoyed the music, because it's going to go back to uh, Gear 3 music again. And this is another case where the game teaches you an interesting little mechanic about Gear 3 as well. If you drill through blocks and hold forward like this, you can continuously just like drill through large gaps like this. Here, we're gonna just hold gear 3, so we can destroy these faster. Oop! Oh! I swear, I'm good at this game, guys. I'm, I'm just, you know, making it look like I'm bad because I feel bad for some reason. I don't know why. I'm making excuses. Boy, that looks dangerous. We should probably run. Wow, that was close. I don't know how we made it. Okay, we're actually in a room that's legitimately way more terrifying. This room requires you to be perfect. If you screw up your drill stins even once, you will lose to the wall. The spikes. And it's mostly just because they were just like, let's put all these incredibly durable blocks in your path. Alright, now here again they would, you know, like me to, uh... 
use the drilling function to go over those things, but, you know, spikes don't kill me instantly. This isn't Mega Man. I can handle this. So I do. Unfortunately, I have to deal with more cat boos. No! Okay, the cat boos swarm in. When you kill them, they turn into four little will o -wisps. You cannot... Wow! That was amazing, RNG! Okay, they randomly come at you when they're, like, in the will o -wisp form. They all have to dis dis be dis uh, disappear off screen. And they can either take two or three. So, the fact that they all, all went down in two... Um... It's really nice. Now, we're Indiana Jones now. We got more boulders, so... I really want to be quick here with destroying these before the boulder catches up. Okay, here comes the boulder. And there it goes. And we have to use gear 3 to get up to this. And we're already at the, the level boss. This one's actually kind of a tricky one to pull off fast. But it is really fun and satisfying to do. It's very obvious what will happen here. I'm going to drill this. And poke him. Timing for this is actually a lot tighter than it looks because the longer you're hanging onto this thing, spinning your drill, the more it likes to flail around, making the timing way more difficult. Okay, we're good. That was a pretty perfect boss fight, actually. I wish more bosses in this game were like this one, where it's it's all about timing and skill. Sadly, this is not a tradition that will be held up. Not to say that the boss fights in this game are horrible or anything, just they are not what I particularly like about in this game. <laughs> We're back here. Dash along. Viewer handiwork. Now, Kuro Ruins 2 is an interesting level because it's our first real, like, complete major gameplay shift. It may seem, you know, normal at first. Spooky skeletons, you're drilling them. They follow down. Very easy. It's it's like you're drilling them with a giant drill and they're they're brittle bones or something. Go figure. But we're well, there we gonna mix up. Instead of going left, we're gonna go right. It's very important we go right rather than left. Because if you go too far left you'll hit like a little roadblock and you can't continue. <sighs> Say hello to the Hag Twins. I don't know their actual real names, but I just call them the Hag Twins because Well clearly they're related, like sister and such. But I do not know if they're conjoined or not. You tell me. I do know that they're obsessed with the gems. And really corny boss fights. Unfortunately, there's really nothing I can do to speed this up. It doesn't matter if I deflect the shots or I simply jump over them. It takes the exact same time. I just like deflecting the shots because I think it looks cooler. Question mark. Or I can, you know, take a bullet to the face and say, Yeah, that was nothing. That hurt. That didn't hurt at all. Totally did took that bullet to the face on purpose.
Anyways, this is our real major gameplay change. We can now drill the water. The controls here are extremely floaty and momentum based. You still drill through things like normal, but now the mo you can now drill to the left that pulls you in the direction you go. And vice versa, if you drill, uh, if you spin your drill counterclockwise, it will have you go in reverse. And when you're not going in a particular direction, you are slowly but surely sinking. So you always have to keep that little movement in mind that you're always going to be perpetually falling. What? That was weird. I don't know like how that counted as me drilling that fish, but okay game. I will make one major defense about this level though. I love the music that's in this level. I really, really do. So, drop a little bit just so I can get through here a little easier. Ah, I was hoping I could sneak by that fish. Okay, through there. Don't worry, guys. I understand. You want to see more water levels. I got you covered. Now, it wouldn't be a Pokemon game without Star You, now wouldn't it? Wait, this isn't Pokemon, though. It's not theft if you make the game! Wait, no, I don't actually go that way. I'm thinking of another thing. Unfortunately, when they're sucking you in like that, the star yous are completely invulnerable. Alright, that's good. I am trying to properly line myself up here, because again, your momentum is super weird, uh, a floaty underwater. So, actually lending yourself up to get through tight corners or drill through certain blocks like that... ...is a lot harder than you would think. I will say this though, the water levels in this game are probably the buggiest areas in this entire game. Like for the, for the most part, Drill Dozer is an incredibly well done game. There is very little bugs, glitches, skips. I poked around as much as possible in this game trying to find something I can do. But it was only until the water level, where I was able to find something. And even then, it has no real use in the speedrun. All it is, is when you're in the water level and you're in certain rooms, if you spin your drill counterclockwise, which is, you know, sending you in reverse, if you mash the uh, in the same direction you're going in reverse in, like if you're, if I'm up against the wall, I'm in reverse, and I'm mashing le uh, left, weird things start to happen. Not, not like clipping, but rather, uh, the sprites lock up, the mu uh, colors get just joined in and replaced, hitboxes stretch out, to impossible um, sizes that they're not supposed to be. 
And as much as I would love to show it to you guys, it kind of crashes the game. <laughs> so that would be bad. Sadly, this area right here, it has a lot more of the same and just kind of just systematically going up waterfalls here. Because the pressure here is so strong, you have to go up like this. There is no other way. And if you don't do it like this anyway, it's a million times slower. So it's just kind of just timing your drill spins just right to get through as quickly as you can. I will say, um, oddly enough, the kind of game that really helped me get good at ge uh, shifting gears <laughs> is a game also has the uh, uh, name Gears in the title, and that's Gears of War. Um, in Gears of War, use the right bumper in order to reload your gun. And in that game, reloading also has like a little small little section of the reload bar that if you hit the R bu uh, right bumper again at, a, at the right moment, you get a faster reload speed and a little bit of extra bullet up. The, I compare it to that because it's a very similar timing. So playing that game made me get way better at this one. So we're just going through the norms here. Luckily, if you're worried about taking damage, you can kind of just let your drill bounce into the spikes so you don't, you know, run your face into them. But I really don't care at certain spots, as you can see. It's actually faster for me to take a little damage just so I can line up my drill spins a little better. No, drill. Thank you. Yeah, your active reload. That's what it was called. It's actually been a long time since I played Gears of War. Also, hey guys! You guys, um... Like Link to the Past speedruns and randomizers, right? I've seen a lot of them here on this channel. You guys like Agatum? Because I swear, this is this is like a if Agatum were a fish. You can only reflect certain shots back at him, but not the blue balls. He gives you blue balls, you're stuck doing nothing. Here we actually want to take some damage from this fish wall right here, because it actually speeds it up a little bit. So this is Agafish. And... No. Yes! We want the Dirt Clods. Yes! Best RNG! <laughs> So, where is it? Okay. So, we have one more section here. Hopefully no more blue balls. That'd be ideal. Nope. Darn it.
Okay, here's one. Okay, good, two. It's actually really nice to see two pop out like that. Because every time you reflect one and hit him back, he's stunned for a little bit. Taking that much longer to spit out the next one. Keep in mind, uh, I think the Pokemon you're talking about came out in the generation before this game came out. Um, in fact, if you listen to a lot of the music in this game, it has um, a lot of trumpet style music to it. Something that Pokemon Generation 3 had a lot of. <laughs> And we got our favorite fush, uh, fruit gusher, blueberry. Well, my favorite. I don't know about yours. Your favorite might be something else, but then you'd have poor taste. Why wouldn't you like blueberry? Alright. We're done with that. We're going off to Metal City. Really? I could swear that looks like that one fish from uh, Generation 3. Alright. Wishy-washy? Kinda? Okay, I can see wishy-washy. I was thinking more of the shape, not much the idea. Also... Metal City is the, one of the longest levels in the game, because it introduced these time-based blocks. They will restore after a while, after you've destroyed them. And we got these things here. I like these things too because instead of the idea of your kickback propelling you left and right a certain degree, these are all about sending the kickback upwards. So I need to time this right. There we go. Bye pooch, bye pooch. Yeah, that's what I was thinking was a Molarola. Or well, Actually, I can never say that Pokemon's name correctly. I'm trying to time it right here so that rather than <sighs> really no oh, I bonked I really don't want to bonk here there we go that's all I was trying to do because it because if you do that right it's faster than trying to wait for the time block to restore itself Drill this out. For whatever reason, if you try it after a while, those things you drill up, go back to where they were. So you actually have a very small window of time here. I always considered this game more like a puzzle platformer than anything else. Before, like, an actual platformer. Because there is a little bit of problem solving you have to do in order to figure out where to go and what to do. How to continue it. Okay, I hate these enemies the most. Anybody who's ever played this game before knows exactly how I feel. Uh, I have every right to feel this way about these things. I don't even have a name for them. I just hate them. Alright, this is probably one of my favorite sections of this entire game. Because this level, or this section, is 
all speed execution with the dashes. And that was really bad right there. I meant to do a dash and I jumped. But that's the downsides of doing this dash trick I'm doing right here, where I'm repeatedly dashing as quickly as I can, setting that little dash animation. Because I'm always kind of like trying to reset the animation the way it is, it's potentially where I'll just jump and look like an idiot. You out. Get me away from this annoying. Luckily, I don't have to kill the whatchamacallit up there. I just have to kill all the little mooks. Oh no! I. That was sloppy. <laughs> well, it's like they're made by the same company, right, eh? Ghost King? How you doing, bud? Stick around, folks, after my run. Uh, in about... 55 minutes? No, it, well, around... I'm gonna say 50 minutes. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of... courtesy here. Of my estimate. Um, but Ghost King G1 is going to be doing, uh, I believe, the only PlayStation Vita speedrun of this marathon. Uh, it's called Yee's Memories of Cell Sated. Pretty cool game, pretty cool runner. Now we have gear three, so we can go higher. And unfortunately, even though we have gear three, and it's like, yeah, oh yeah, this is where they introduce time blocks of high durability, meaning they take that much longer to drill through. And they've built all the puzzles around these particular blocks. So, it just takes that much longer to get through. So, here we go. I gotta wait here for that one block before I kick back. through that section. Uh, yeah, pretty much handheld games only. Not necessarily all handheld exclusives, it looks like. Like, I've seen games on here that have console counterparts, but were more or less got a port, I want to say. It, it's, it's weird to count some games out there with the idea of them being ports. There's some that I think that, yes, there's a console counterpart, but the GBA version, because of the limitations, they had to, they had to make for themselves for that game, uh, for having been on such a smaller, uh, less powerful console, that they're completely different games, so it's kind of interesting to see that style. That said, 
I would have loved to have seen a sequel for this game. Like, imagine if this sequel, if a sequel came out for Drill Dozer on the DS. And I mean the original DS, not like the 3DS. They could have done some really cool stuff with the drilling and using both screens at the same time. Because you've seen the whole, like, drilling through uh, the vents that kind of go fast. Imagine if the dual screen stuff were to take advantage of that. I think that could be really cool stuff. Okay, I want you to stay right there. Good. And thread the needle. I probably could have worded that better, honestly. But I'm gonna just go ahead and say it's late. I'm tired. <laughs> and I don't care if I screw up a word or two. We're all having a good time, right? It's most important. Okay, I really want to deal with this guy. I have lost so much time because that tech to that particular enemy. Alright. Nice. Alright, we're pretty much done with this level. But what's that you say? I haven't fought the boss for this level yet. Uh, Darn it, why'd you remind me? Because here it is. Boy, did you think that the, you know, the last few bosses were hard? Or were too easy? And you want a real challenge? Well, say hello to the most difficult boss in the entire game. This boss will fire a missile at you. The color of the missile is the color... I screwed up. Oh, never mind. Um, the color of the missile is, um... The color you need to drill... Uh, either drill the drill clockwise or counterclockwise. If it's red, counterclockwise. If it's blue, clockwise. The other thing is, on the monitor in the back there, we'll show up a number between 1 and 9. The number, uh, means how many hits it will take before the missile blows up. I want to get the uh the number down to five uh okay let me focus here because i actually there's a lot to keep track of since now we're at a part where it's random and i have to pay attention so this fight is all about diverting your attention between the color of the missile and the number in the back hopefully i get some good luck here Okay, five, good. No, wrong button! Okay. I want to... Again, I want this number to be at five. Because at five, she can't screw me over no matter what. Alright. Okay, good. It's possible she can fire a missile with just one, meaning no matter what I do, I either have to jump it or it'll blow up in my face, and there's nothing I can do. So hopefully, no ones. Oh, a four, that's beautiful! Awesome, we're through this boss fight. It's surprisingly difficult and really frustrating when she gives you one missiles because there's just nothing you can do and it's a long animation of her like you, you either you know it blows up in your face in which case you took a bunch of damage or you dodge it and she slams her fist on the ground like how dare you dodge my missile play my game darn you So 
So I'm really happy to be done with that boss fight. That actually went really well. So let's see. We're, uh, nope. Which is the wrong place? There we go. Metal City Skyland. This is another level that decides to throw another major twist in the mix. Start. It's going to start off very, you know, Metal City like. Break gear one. Big surprise. We're being shot at a lot. We're gonna get shot at a lot, actually. Okay, that was the last one. Alright, gear two. This is also one of the shortest levels in the game, if you know what you're doing. Wow, look at all these enemies this game really wants me to kill. They're gonna live. Oh, let me... Thank you. Oh no, it's the Hag Twins again. This time, they're in the air. Whee! Now, it's very important you don't take any damage when they're bouncing around the room like this. If you take damage from them, you, have, you basically lose a cycle. Ready, guys? Spin! Two! Win! Alright. Now, this is actually where it becomes a little more dangerous. Because the room's so small now, and they're going to be bouncing around room a lot. I would not be surprised if I at least got hit once. Come on. Bounce right. Okay, we're good. And now, we have the ability to drill oxygen! And now introduced this is one of the most awkward controls for people who have played this game. Flight. This is harder timing than it looks. Because I'm trying to lose as little altitude as possible with my shifting. And... There's a slight delay when you can start spinning your drill. Luckily, we get gear 3 fairly quickly, so... I don't have to do that, um, tight timing anymore. But one nice important thing this game teaches you that you can do that kind of, like, hover, is if you're holding, like, say, I'm spinning the drill with my right shoulder button. If you are holding right shoulder button and held L at the same time, you will just hover in place. You won't gain any altitude, but you can keep spinning your drill, which is the most important part. And we're going to use that to get through some of these tighter parts, like this. Once we get right over here, we are pretty much can just hold, go straight up. <sighs> Come on. Thank you. What? That was awkward, but it's okay. Poke this.
And we're fine. I believe, yeah, there's nothing to worry about here. It's literally go to the right and go up. Don't hit any bombs, of course. You can try hitting the bombs, you'll find it won't be very effective. And we're already at the end of the level, ladies and gentlemen. It did not take long to get here. But this is probably one of the most difficult fights for casual players. You are still getting used to the flight controls, and now you must go to this. <laughs> Good luck. Ah. Come on. These are tighter than it looks just because it's just really easy to bonk something and hit a little spike. Alright. Phase 2. This one, though, likes to use these Right here to kind of like push you. We actually want to try and take advantage of that if we can. There we go. Because that actually gets us through here a little faster. The next part, the third phase though, is arguably the most difficult to do fast. So I'm going to focus here. Okay, good. No, I'm not risking it. I accidentally let go of R. Okay, that's good. Because what can happen during this part right here is when you get hit by one of those lightning bolts, you lose all control and you start to fall. And then you try to, re uh, you know, you know, immediately start doing your drill to start getting altitude back, but then you get hit by another lightning bolt and you just get knocked all the way down to the bottom. It's really bad. Oh! I guess one explosion screen was not good enough for you. Alright, this phase though, thankfully, has no RNG. It is honestly kind of really predictable and easy. There's not a big fear. The only big fear here is I really don't want to take any damage here. Because I do one third of its health if I have my drill spinning at uh, gear 3. If it's anything less, I do less damage. Alright. Obviously he's going a little faster here. The little chunks that he's spinning out, uh, don't worry. But here he will try to fake you out and fire two lasers back to back. And he's done. Well, I'm glad that's all said and done with. And we finally get a re uh, red Chaos Emerald back. Alright, wrap it up guys. Let's head back to our trailer. I feel re uh, ready to chill uh, out. Hang with my friends on my cool trailer that's currently... Not my trailer? Guys, I think they've been pranked. Yep. We're in jail now. So let's go to prison. There's a lot of exposition here that I'm currently skipping because it's a lot of exposition. But here's the thing you need to know. Jill's in jail. But the drill dozer has a mind of its own. And it's going on a rampage! It has tasted human blood.
So, where'd you- Unfortunately, though, um... The Drill Dozer has a really pathetic jump when Jill's not in it. You would think that would be the opposite, considering there's less to carry, but apparently that isn't the case. We also are at gear one, so the drill is pretty weak. We're done with that. The other thing we can do is the drills. We can power down. There's these security lasers here. For power down, we snake right by them. And this is actually one of the harder parts of this level, is destroying these blocks just in time to not get caught. Because if that laser trips, the blocks below you disappear, and you fall into a... Well... Lasers that kill you. You're gonna have a bad time. Right. So, right here. Good. Wow, that was really close. Alright, that went really, really well, actually. I'm actually uh, super happy with how that turned out. I would, if I was just a hair second off, I would have been caught and I would have fallen to my death. Also, I can't dash in this form either, so I move fairly slow regardless. These are tighter jumps than you think, because you spin the drill so quickly, and then you just hang on there for less time. Alright, one more move crush. Now I got to deal with this guy, uh, this thing up there that's shooting out green gunk. If that stuff gets on you, you you basically can't spin your drill. And you have to like mash the d-pad in order to shake it off. Typical stuff, really. It, it it's it doesn't even hurt you. It really just makes things really annoying. All right, we got we were we were in, reunited with Jill. I would explain the exposition here, but I honestly I don't remember what is the exposition here. Something something, mom still with you? Something something something. Hashtag cry. I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Now we can wrap up this level. Well, actually, this level really isn't that big. So, we're going to get through it fairly fast. Go through this. Oh, one nice thing. You know what's nice? Having a human that can pull levers and switches that can turn off security. So we don't trip alarms anymore. Ain't that nice? Oh, this game totally has a story. I just skip it all. You know, all things considered, the story in this game isn't bad. It it does what it sets out to do. It creates a setting, introduces some characters, and it, you know, it's a video game. What more do you need? If you need more, then you're wrong. You don't need anything else.
Hey, Nubo has a heart of gold, and you un and you all know it. These enemies are really super annoying, by the way. They have huge hitboxes, and they're not worth fighting. Gear 3! So, here we're also introduced to another kind of like mechanic on top of another mechanic. Uh, we have the vents that we can only drew through spinning a drill a certain way, but now we also have these little, like, anklets on the vents there with a number on them. Number that represents what gear you need to be to go through them. But if you are at the correct gear when you reach them, uh, you'll go through them, and you'll go through and uh, get it instantly boosted, uh, boost to speed. All right, I gotta focus here. I'm gonna I'm gonna just explain this before uh, I actually start. This guy fires instant death needles. Run! I don't know why this guy exists in this game until now, but I really don't like him. To go fast in his sections of the game? Oh, he's back by the way. Yeah, did you miss him? I sure did. No! I do not like this guy. No! Okay. Try this again. No, not gonna be stupid. No! I released too soon. Ugh. I hate you and your noodles of doom. A lot. Can you see where a lot of my runs have died to this guy? If you say no, I hate you. I, like, I can't even begin. Okay, I'm seriously gonna stop choking out now. I'm gonna focus. There literally isn't enough time to um, get across those gaps without him firing at you, so you have to do it like that. Alright, we're past. Luckily we'll never see that guy again. We don't even fight him as a boss or something or get revenge. I would love to fight that guy and get revenge. Um, I will say this though, again, I'm playing a new game plus, so I have a lot of health, so taking damage here really isn't that big of a deal. In this level, um, you actually play a lot safer in any percent, because you want to have as much health as humanly possible. And here's the main reason why. We get trapped in a room, and there's these bombs. And, you know, you're encouraged to defuse the bombs. Well, I have a lot of HP. My face says I can take it! How's that for bomb defusal expertise? Yeah! As long as I keep talking, nobody will explode except for Jill. So 
so yeah that's really all there is to it we could uh you know diffuse these in the normal way but this, obviously this is a lot faster and we have more than enough health here to deal with them in this way there's a certain amount and this is the last one right here and we're done hey wow those bombs were really effective mr uh warden i gotta say i can't believe i survived your heinous plan to blow me up I think he's buying it. Alright, now we get a little exposition here because, you know, she's like, I'm a cop, but Warden's kind of an ass, so could you go take care of him for me? I'm like, okay. So we're going to go do that right now. And here's the warden. And the uh, and the warden turned his entire prison into a robot for us to fight. I'm not lying. Now, luckily, this uh, first part here is pretty simple. You just dodge stuff. And he's like, "Oh, fine, I'll hit you with that." Now, we gotta destroy it from the inside out. And this is kind of interesting where they turn a boss fight into a platforming section. Kinda. It's not the same idea of a platforming section, but you get the point here. You have three areas you have to get through. This one has you uh, looking at these monitors to let you know what, how, what level you need to spin your drill. Just pay attention, and you'll get through this just fine. You'll see an arrow pointing down, that means you're spinning the drill too high. You need to cool it down. If it's okay, just keep it as is. Here, I need to get the gear three. And that section's taken care of. That one's pretty basic, it's really easy to pull. Um, and the next one I'm going to... Because you can do any of these sections in any order. I always leave the hardest for last just because, you know... Suspense! Oh, he fires more missiles. This time they home. Boy, I love the sound of that. It's the sound of... I outsmarted a dimwit. Let's see, we want to take the upper one this time. And this one doesn't have any warning, you're just going to have to be kind of quick on the draw. Luckily, you can usually look ahead and see exactly what level you need to have your gear, uh, drill spinning. Here's two. This one's a two. This is a one. And then we just need to switch to left trigger. And two. One. And two. And we're through. Somehow, I always clip and hit that enemy for some reason. Oops, then shift. That's fine, we got plenty of time. Unfortunately, the boss at this point has wisened up. And realize, you know what? Lasers and missiles won't do you. You know what? What will? Fake outs. Like that. This guy will now randomly decide with a fake out. And he swings his arm a lot faster, so the timing for this. So, come on. There we go. Okay. That's actually really good luck. <laughs> Sometimes I have spent, like, up to two minutes. Of this guy just faking me out. Alright. Time for the suspense room. If you d you do notice that there's a little timer on the bottom right corner. Luckily, if you screw up, you can, like, uh, drill through these wires. And each time you drill through the wires, 
uh, adds 10 seconds to a timer. So don't feel too pressured if you're doing this. Okay. Luckily, they also act as platforms. And we're done. This is the drill that will pierce through the heavens! Or the giant prison bot thing. They blew it up. Don't worry, the warden lived. It's anime. So <laughs> if a giant explosion happens, I assure you, the villain inside is perfectly fine. <laughs> Alright, that's obviously the end of that level. And at this point, uh, we're approaching the final two levels of the game, and the game is going to start to wrap up really fast. So... This is the drill missile. So, you know that main antagonist I told you about, Krug, in the very, very, very uh, first level? He decides to fire a giant missile at our house, in our base, and is drilling down to the main part of it underground. So we're hopping into the giant missile that is drilling through to our base, and we're going to destroy it from the inside out of, in order to stop it. Do I need to repeat myself? Did you all get that? It was all very important that you were all paying attention. This will be on the test. Um, this is honestly one of the most difficult areas of the game just because they throw so many things at you at once. With these sparks that travel on the floors, uh, just a bunch of bombs, explosions, um... And the screen shakes constantly. that part start drilling all right this section right here I actually do want to focus here because if I screw up I fall down and this takes that much more uh, longer like that because of the screen shaking there's a slight delay in inputs whenever the screen shakes like that, and it really throws off my timing. And the screen shaking is random. Okay, her through. Okay, we're past the scariest part in the level. I'm... I feel good now. Just gonna go in for the motions here. Uh, at least... In the any percent category of this game, um, this, this level's frightening, because you only have two units of health, right? You take so much damage in this level. Going fast here is scary. 
It's so easy to die. And um, the way death works in this game is that um, when you die, you, res uh, you respawn at the cost of 50 chips, the, the little currency that has been dropping from various blocks and enemies. Here, I'm actually trying to destroy these blocks, because inside uh, some of these blocks is these bombs. And, I'm tr and I want to make it so, uh, uh, come on, shift! I know which blocks have bombs in them and which ones don't, so I'm taking the full advantage of that. Here, there's a bomb here. They all have bombs on them, except for that one over there. But because it's faster for me to drill through these steel blocks than it is to uh, drill through the normal blocks. There we go. No, all those you know, all that time at the prison diffusing bombs with your face, Jill, really has paid off. I gotta say, you're taking those explosions like a pro. Alright. Here we're at the little mini boss here, and here we kinda have to reverse Jill, first of all. All right, we're done. But we're not done with the level, because it's never that easy, is it? Luckily, our friends have decided, hey, what if you kept spinning the drill? Oops. I accidentally slipped off the lifter. That's right, folks. We're going to get the drill to go in reverse and send it back to the surface. But apparently Game Freak has been playing a lot of Super uh, uh, Super Metroid and realized they needed an escape sequence. And just like any true escape sequence, it's all flash. Not a lot of pressure, really. It looks like it's a lot of pressure, but really, unless you let go of the drill, you're gonna be just fine. And we're done. with that part. We're not done with this level. We still have one last thing to do here. Because, you know, we, we can't just simply get, you know, put the missile out of the ground. We're going to re, uh, re reverse engineer this thing so that the missile is sent back to where it came from. Because, you know, it's not ours. It's only fair we return it to sender. In order to do that, though, we have to pass some time here. And unfortunately, um, we kind of did this little mini game here. Um, where we're kind of passing this coolant thing that's keeping the reactor from overheating. So there really isn't a whole lot to say here, honestly. <laughs> I 
you know, don't don't let the needle go too far to the right or the left or, you know, <laughs> nuclear meltdown and such. I do would like the moment to say, um, since, oh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> almost had a mistake there. Uh, I wanted to take this moment to thank everybody for coming in to watch Handheld Heroes this weekend. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves and you continue to enjoy yourselves throughout the weekend and enjoy some really awesome runs. And to kind of, you know, show my appreciation, I could skip this next cutscene. It's kind of a very funny cutscene. So I'm not going to skip it. For you guys, enjoy as we ship our drill missile back to where it came. All right, you saw it. <laughs> and we're up to the final level. The Doom Dozer. So, a lot of things happen. Just know that it's serious time. You can tell by the music. And the other thing, just like in the last level, you might have noticed that even when we got Gear 3, the music remained the same. It did not change because this is a very serious time. Ow! Oh, wow, that missile got me good. Uh, this is also a very short level too, so we're really approaching to the end here. We got about like two minutes left for this run. Hopefully. That's, it depends if I screw up this one part. Because it's really easy to fall down and waste a lot of time. Also, the missiles in the background come in the foreground. And they're really super accurate. <laughs> Like, holy crap, these guys have good aim. <laughs> I have lost uh, a couple runs to those missiles on any percent just because of how accurate they are. And they do a, a decent amount of damage to you as well. I'll know when I get there. Yep, here it is. Alright. This part's really tricky to do. I can't- I don't have a lot of moves in here. And I really don't want to fall down. I just want to deal as much damage as I can to this game. No! Okay. Okay, we're good. Alright, now we have these totem pole things. These guys have a lot of health, unfortunately. 
That one's just kind of an example. This one says, I am missile support, bud. And these missiles are surprisingly accurate. We have to deal with these ones. And you have to tackle them from the, um, the weak one, which is what they had. This is how good of a shot these freaking missiles are. They can shoot through the cracks! How good are their shots? I swear! Alright. Final section. And then we're gonna get right into the final boss after this. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly explain one thing here I'm gonna do. As soon as I drill through the giant pillar in the middle of this room, a, cu a cutscene is going to trigger, and I want to stop spinning my drill as soon as I can, so I stop generating lag. So it just goes through quicker. Um, and then the boss fight's going to happen. And I'm going to quickly tell you what's happening, because I'm going to skip all the dialogue and, uh, and scenes. Um, our drill breaks. We have no more drills. But you know what we do have? our fists. So, we're gonna punch this guy. Ah, okay. Unfortunately, we can't dodge Dad, so I need to focus here. Really? Timing for this is harder than Time! Yeah, that's the final boss. Literally, it's charge a punch and smack him good. Because, if you're perfectly honest, this kid is, uh, this is just a wimpy kid wearing an intimidating mask. I always name the final split Falcon Punch, because that's really that it, because that's it, that's the final boss. You just smack him good. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to just skip and go right into the credits here, because they just say, they say stuff. It's heartwarming, feel good stuff, but if you really care about it, I highly recommend you just play this game for yourself. It's still a fantastic game. Uh, casually to this day. Alright. But that about wraps it up for me, guys, tonight. I hope you all enjoyed the run. Um, I hope you all stick around. Because up next is Ghost King doing, um, Yee's Memories of Cell Seda. Uh, a run I'd actually sat down on the couch with for bef uh, with him before, so I know exactly how cool of a run it could be. Streaming, uh, extremely entertaining. I wish I could let the rest of the mu uh, credits play out here because I really love this theme, uh, this this song. It's just not a good final boss unless you can punch it to death. I didn't have to kill him. I just need to te put him in his place. <laughs> Using a drill the entire game, final boss, ah, uh, let's just punch him. I destroyed everything else he had with a drill. All I had left to do was teach him who, that I was the man on top. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm ready to shut her down any time now. Alright, man, it was a great run. I appreciate, appreciate you showing up for it. Right. Alright, till next time folks, I'm cutting down my stream. Alright, uh, up next we have uh, Ghost King G1. Yeah. <laughs> With, uh, I don't even know how, know how to say the game's name, ease. so I'm going to leave that ease. to you. Ease. Ease. <laughs> uh, I, I have to get the first word in because Ozzy loves to mispronounce the name of this game. Why would I ever want to do that? It's, it's, like, it's not like I have an origin story for that.
Mike's run earlier. I can't resist. <laughs> All right, I stopped my stream. All right. No, seriously, have a good run, Ghost. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah. Ugh. I'm. Good it's job. gotta be just hot where you are, right? Actually, no. It's kind of nice in my room. It might be just because I have a fan. It's not pointed at me, but my room is actually fairly nice right now. It still feels like at uh, like 90 in my room right now. Ugh. And it's at night. Alrighty. Alright. Till next time, dude. Later. See ya. Alright, guys. Good luck, man. Alright. Thank you. Alright. So I'll go ahead and give a quick introduction uh, as I'm transitioning my cables from plugging into my f computer to my television, because I have a bit of a janky setup here. Uh, my name is Ghost King G1, and this game is East Memories of Salceda. This is the only PlayStation Vita game on this uh, schedule, which I'm a little honored about, slightly sad about, because uh, PlayStation Vita is a little underrepresented in general. Uh, so this is a, v a Vita exclusive game in the East series, one of the earlier Vita uh, titles to be released, hence uh, I think that might be part of why it hasn't been ported over to other platforms yet. Uh, we're going to be getting this run on the easy difficulty, the category says any percent easy, uh, easy is just the standard difficulty we run any percent on, higher difficulties up until, at least uh, other than Nightmare, tend to be um, just a little bit of padding. So, you know, it takes two cycles to kill something that would kill that you would kill in one cycle. Stuff like that. So, I'll go ahead and give a countdown here. Um, since we're streaming off of my timer, I'll I guess we'll just be doing that. Uh, so, on the count of three, three, two, one, and go.